Okay, I know it sounds too good to be true, but apple cider vinegar and vinegar in general is actually an extremely effective tool for controlling blood sugar and improving insulin sensitivity. And there is a ton of evidence to back this up. Apple cider vinegar is a vinegar made from fermented apple juice. And you might automatically think that that would mean it's high in sugar as it's made from juice. But the fermentation process breaks down the sugar. So there's actually next to none left by the time apple cider vinegar is created. But how does this tie in with blood sugar and managing it? Well, studies have shown that consuming apple cider vinegar before a meal significantly lowers the blood sugar and insulin response. For example, one study had participants take a tablespoon and a half of apple cider vinegar before a meal that included a bagel and orange juice, foods that are high in carbohydrates and that would typically cause a big rise in blood sugar and insulin. They found that the group that consumed the apple cider vinegar were up to 34% more insulin sensitive an hour after eating compared to the group that consumed the placebo. But what exactly does this mean for insulin resistance and diabetes? Both of these conditions are the result of the body not managing blood sugar efficiently. And they are basically the same thing because type 2 diabetes and prediabetes are actually caused by insulin resistance. However, insulin resistance starts long before you see any change in your fasting blood sugar. So it often goes undiagnosed until the point in which it reaches prediabetes. But if we can identify and address insulin resistance before it has caused our blood sugar to rise, we can stop it in its tracks and stop it before it eventually progresses to diabetes. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, we need to understand what insulin resistance is so that we can understand how apple cider vinegar can help. Insulin is a hormone that is nicknamed the fat storage hormone. Whenever we eat, blood sugar goes up and insulin increases in order to take the excess energy from our bloodstream to the cells in our body. However, when we become insulin resistant, our cells are not responding to the actions of insulin in the way that they should. So the pancreas releases more insulin as a result and insulin levels and eventually blood sugar levels remain elevated for longer than they should. And it's these high levels of insulin that eventually cause insulin resistance. So in order to combat and reverse insulin resistance, we want to keep our insulin levels low. When insulin is low, this is when our cells start to become more sensitive to it once again. But what causes our insulin levels to remain high in the first place? Now, there are a number of factors that come into play. But the main one, the one that is the most significant is our diet. I mentioned a few moments ago that whenever we eat, our blood sugar goes up. But what I really meant to say is that whenever we eat carbohydrates, our blood sugar goes up. Because it's carbohydrates that are broken down into glucose and this glucose, which is sugar, enters our bloodstream. Fat and protein are not broken down in the same way and do not raise blood sugar levels. Now, I will say that someone who is very insulin resistant, sometimes if they consume too much lean protein, then yes, it does get converted into glucose and they will see a rise in blood sugar. But this can be combated by eating protein with enough healthy fat. But anyways, back to carbohydrates and blood sugar. When blood sugar goes up, the pancreas releases insulin. And insulin, like I said earlier, is responsible for managing blood sugar. Now, this is a normal function of the body. Our body knows what to do when we eat carbs. It knows that they're broken down and insulin's released. And in someone who's metabolically healthy, this isn't an issue. However, eating too many carbohydrates and eating them too frequently means that the body is constantly pumping out insulin in order to keep blood sugar in check. And it's this constant stream of high insulin that causes our cells to become insulin resistant. So we need to focus on keeping our insulin levels low. And fortunately, apple cider vinegar can help us to do just that. Having one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar diluted in water before eating can make the blood sugar and insulin response to that meal significantly lower. One study found that if participants took apple cider vinegar before eating white bread, the blood sugar response was over 30% lower. And there are so many studies that mimic these findings. So clearly there's something to this. Now, before we wrap up, I will say that apple cider vinegar it's not a magic cure-all. Yes, it is very effective. Yes, it is easy to apply and use in your own life. But without making any other changes to your diet and your lifestyle, you're not gonna get long-lasting results. You might be able to manage your blood sugar levels better. You might be able to keep your insulin resistance or your diabetes where it's at. But ultimately, your goal should be reversal. 
because being insulin resistant and being diabetic increases your risk of other diseases further down the line. So yes, take apple cider vinegar before you eat meals that are high in carbohydrates. But beyond that, if you can be a little bit smarter about carbs, that's gonna have a bigger impact. Because with fewer carbs in your diet, there's gonna be less of a need for insulin to begin with. Now, you don't need to cut them out entirely, but limit them where you can. Try not to have high carb snacks in between your meals. Make sure that you're getting most of your calories in throughout the day at your meal times, less snacking in between in general. If you are getting enough protein in at each meal and enough fat, so you wanna be aiming for a minimum of 30 grams at every meal of protein, and then more or less matching that with fat, you're not gonna be hungry for snacks in between. And when you're eating less frequently, when you're not snacking in between meals, and even better if you can incorporate some variation of intermittent fasting, this gives your pancreas a break and allows blood sugar and insulin levels to return to baseline before you eat again. Now, if you want some more tips on how to improve insulin sensitivity naturally, I'm gonna link a video up above which you can check out afterwards. But anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. I wanna hear from you guys down below. Let me know what your experience with apple cider vinegar has been. Do you take it in the mornings? Do you take it before meals? Have you noticed a difference in your blood sugar? Let me know down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.